ASMD is a rare progressive lysosomal storage disorder. It has a wide range of severity. It can vary greatly from person to person. People who have the most severe form of disease have what we used to call type A Neiman pick. We now call it infantile neurovisceral disease. Um, babies who have infantile neurovisceral disease have um, disease that typically presents when they're about four months old. They can have um, enlarged liver, enlarged spleen, and they have a progressive neurodegenerative course. And most of them die by the time they're about two. At the other end of the spectrum is people who have what we used to call type B disease, but now we call chronic visceral ASMD. And those people have enlarged livers and enlarged spleens. They can have lung disease, but they don't typically have neurologic disease. And in between, there is an intermediate form, which we are now calling chronic neurovisceral ASMD. And those people have a disease uh, phenotype somewhere in between the, the severe ends of the spectrum. Well, the symptoms can be quite nonspecific. Most often, I think the first thing that people notice is a large belly. So it's the enlargement of the liver and the spleen. Uh, that causes swelling of the belly and can be uncomfortable. Patients can be non-specifically unwell for other reasons. Um, because of the low platelet count, secondary to the high spleen, bruising, easy bruising, or nosebleeds can be an issue. And very rarely in the more severe cases, because of the high cholesterol and things in the blood, you can get depositions of fat underneath the skin. Um, so those tend to be the first symptoms. And then going on, uh, people can notice problems with the lungs, so getting short of breath on exercise particularly, problems with stairs. But that would certainly be later on in the disease. ASMD is an inherited disease. It's inherited from both parents, um, and it's caused by mutations or changes in the gene that codes for the ASM enzyme. When there are mutations or changes in the ASM gene, it causes the enzyme not to work properly. Um, and when ASM doesn't work properly, it leads to an accumulation of this fatty substance called sphingomyelin. And sphingomyelin builds up in the liver and in the spleen, um, and that causes those organs to be enlarged. It also uh, builds up in the lungs, and it causes lung disease. And in infants with the infantile neurovisceral form of ASMD, it also builds up in the brain. So the diagnosis uh, is usually made on a blood test and what we're looking for is the activity of the enzyme that's affected, so the acid sphingomyelase. And we can measure that, we don't have to measure it in the liver or the spleen, we can measure it in blood cells. Uh, so a simple blood test, it doesn't come back very quickly, it has to go to a specialist lab uh, and be tested there and they actually look at the activity of the enzyme. And that is really the, the mainstay of diagnosis and has been for many years. Nowadays I think we'd also probably look at the genes so we can do genetic testing, and that involves taking blood from the patient, but also often from the parents, and so you can show that they're carriers, and that actually confirms the diagnosis, allows you to uh, look at the specific mutations, and that's important because if people are going to have further children, it allows you to do prenatal diagnosis. Uh, so diagnosis is done on a blood test, but it's not the sort of blood test you get back next week. You may have to wait weeks or even a couple of months for the results. Um, at this time, there's no specific treatment for ASMD. There are treatments which we can use to help um, with some of the symptoms of disease. For example, in babies who have the severe form of disease, um, oftentimes they'll need nutritional support. Um, sometimes they'll need feeding tubes to help maintain um, adequate nutritional intake. Um, many patients can benefit from therapies like physical therapy and occupational therapy. Um, for um, adults with type B disease, some of them have um, lipid abnormalities, so sometimes they'll require medication to help with cholesterol and triglycerides and things like that. So Neiman Pick type B is a chronic disease. It's a lifelong disease, and over time, the burden of disease increases. As far as patients are concerned, uh, the abdomen 
become swollen, can continue to swell. There are episodes of abdominal pain. Uh, that's often, we think, due to parts of the spleen in particular um, becoming short of blood and, and becoming inflamed. Uh, there are the episodes of bruising and bleeding uh, due to the low platelet count. And as time goes on, people get fatigue as a major problem. Uh, so people are tired, they can't do what their friends and uh, colleagues are doing. Uh, they find it very difficult to keep up. And that's made worse by the involvement of the lungs, where it actually becomes difficult to get oxygen from the air into the blood. And so exercise in particular uh, becomes more of an issue. And all of this, as time goes on, increases. Uh, in the more later stages of the disease, the liver can become a problem and people can develop jaundice and liver failure. The speed at which that progresses is very variable from patient to patient. And the effects on the family are those of having a, a child or a family member with a chronic disease. Concern about them, concern about their future health, uh, concern about other children. So obviously there's a one in four risk of any child being affected. Uh, and in the days before treatment, um, the fact that there's nothing you can do. Hopefully, uh, with the advent of an effective treatment, uh, the effects on the patients and indeed on the families will be much less with time because it's something we'll be able to treat.